you take it away. Hi, good evening, everybody. Nice to see you all. My name is Leslie Ballway. I'm the director for Pierce College's Center for Career and Professional Development. We are so excited to be here tonight to learn more about federal resumes um, and, and get to know all the updates and all the, all the questions. Um, my team and I are always trying to find what's new in the world of resumes. Um, and so we're really excited to learn more. Um, and by way of that, let me tell you a little bit about my team. At the Center for Career and Professional Development, as a peer student and alumni, you have access to career counselors throughout your time as a student and as an alumni. Uh, so that's pretty awesome to begin with. Uh, secondly, that that is something that you can use for a, a myriad of different uh, usages during your time uh, as a student and as an alumni. So whether that's career counseling to do your resume, whether it's working on your interviewing or salary negotiations, positioning, moving from one part of a company onto the next, we are here to help with all of that. Um, so we have the whole team here tonight uh, saying hello to Marcy, uh, James, and Andrew, who are all part of the Center for Career and Professional Development. Marcy and James are both our career development counselors. So they're the people that you are definitely going to be speaking with. If you haven't already, I definitely recommend making an appointment to chat through what your career goals are, maybe even talk about how to set those career goals um, and then continue meeting with them so that you can stay on track to meet those goals. We know that College is a huge investment of your time, your energy, your resources, your money, and we want to make it worth your time. So we're here to help with that, and we're here to learn a little bit today, too. Um, so great to see you all, and I'll pass it back to Terrence. Terrence, thanks so much for collaborating on this with us. Thank you so much. Uh, let me change the view here for myself. And as a reminder, I know Terrence just said this, but if you're a peer student on this call, please go ahead and change your display name to, to be your first and last name so we know who you are. And thanks to Jim for putting in the chat um, our link to make an appointment. Um, and then we'll talk more about the resources that we have at our disposal for, our disposal for you. Um, and thank you for introducing yourself in the chat. We'll keep an eye on that chat as you have questions. There'll be time at the end, I think, for questions as well. Um, we're really excited to, to learn more. Thank you so much. If we could give a virtual round of applause to uh, Leslie for the, the excellent welcome. Um, now I'm going to introduce um, our speaker. Uh, if you would give me a moment, I'm going to up her bio, which I will read very briefly, and then we will get going. Okay, so this is what, oh, here, here it is. All right, thank you so much for your patience, everyone. So Ruth Hurtado, Ruth, excuse me, is a learning and development program manager in the Air Traffic Organizations Employment Development Group within the Federal Aviation Administration. Here, she manages the Operations Manager Leadership Development Program technical operations. Uh, she is also a professional coach with a specialty in positive psychology and trainer on personal resilience. Uh, previously, she served in various roles um, at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration, which is known as the HRSA, including professional development instructor, 
Organizational Development Program Manager for the HRSA Learning Institute and the Onboarding Program Manager at the Bureau of Primary Health Care within HRSA. In these roles, she worked on online course development and professional development and training for the workforce. Uh, she started her federal career after completing an internship through the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities, uh, she received her BA in psychology from Hood College and a master of science degree in healthcare administration from the University of Maryland Global Campus. She is a certified DISC trainer and has a certificate in program management for learning and development professionals from the Association of Talent Development. She is also a member of the National Resume Writers Association and specializes in federal resumes. She serves as the outreach chair for the National Hispanic Coalition of Federal Aviation Employees, and she is a graduate of the Mujeres, the Hispanic Alliance for Career Enhancement, a women's leadership development program. She is also a graduate of HRSA's HLI adjunct faculty program, where she developed a course on personal resilience that she teaches to a variety of groups, ranging from college students to senior executives. Would you all please uh, uh, give your attention to the one and only Miss Ruth Day. <laughs> Thank you, Terrence. Uh, wow, did I do all that? That was long. <laughs> Did it. Did it. <laughs> that was funny. Um, but yeah, thank you, Terrence, for the introduction. And thank you for the uh, career offices as well for inviting me to speak today. I'm really excited. I'm going to be sharing my slides here. Uh, can you all see that? Okay, great. So I'm really excited to be talking to you today about federal careers. And I want to just start off by talking a little bit about my story. So as Terrence mentioned, I did start my career off through an internship program. So when I was in college, I saw a flyer for an internship that was a paid internship opportunity to work in the federal government. And I really didn't know what it meant um, to work in the federal government at that time. I didn't even know that was an option for me, really. But I took the opportunity to apply for that position, and I was selected to work at the National Science Foundation my freshman year in college. And so I worked at the National Science Foundation in the Office of Equal Opportunity Programs, and I learned about special emphasis programs such as Hispanic Heritage Month, Black History Month, discrimination complaints. And I worked with some really great mentors and supervisors who really instilled in me the opportunity to learn about working in the federal government and also ongoing learning and development. And I really love that about the federal government. So I've had the opportunity to work at the National Science Foundation, as well as the Air Force Medical Logistics Office, um, several agencies within the Department of Health and Human Services, and more, most recently with the Federal Aviation Administration as a Learning and Development Program Manager. So I've had a variety of different experiences, and I really have, have had a great career over these last um, over 23 years. So the objectives for today are, I want to discuss the reasons to pursue a federal government career. I wanna talk about the federal job hiring process. I wanna explain the format for the federal resume. And also I wanna talk about some tips for federal interviews. So why work for the federal government? So there are a variety of different reasons why you should consider working for the federal government. One of them is making a difference. So when you work for the federal government, you're all you're able to really make a difference and work on projects and programs that impact the nation as a whole. So that is a really great way to make a difference and, and a reason to work for the federal government. Also, location. So although most of the federal government is headquartered in Washington, D.C., there are offices throughout the country um, for the federal government. And there's also now a lot of opportunities for remote work as well. So you also have an opportunity to do interesting and challenging work. So for example, I work at the Federal Aviation Administration and a lot of the positions we hire for are, for example, air traffic controllers, and they make sure that the national airspace is safe. So when you work in the federal government, you have a range of different projects and work that you can do that's very interesting and challenging. You also have job security. So I know in the private sector, um, it could be an issue where your job isn't as secure, but when you're in the door with the federal government, you have a pretty good sense of job security. 
You also have great benefits and competitive pay. So with the federal government, you'll get federal health benefits. You'll also get a retirement plan as well as paid time off uh, for sick leave and annual leave and federal holidays. There's also jobs for every type of major. So you can major in anything and there is a place for you in the federal government. We're in fact the largest employer in the country. So there's also work-life balance within the federal government. And one of the things that I really enjoy is the ability to have a flexible schedule. So I'm able to work uh, four 10-hour days and I'm, eight, and I'm off every Friday. So I really like that because it allows me to manage my life outside of work. Another great benefit is uh, the government can help pay student loans. So there are programs in which when you start working for a particular agency, they can help pay back some of the student loans that you've incurred while you've been in school. And also the government is hiring. So we are looking for new talent. Uh, there are many people retiring in the next couple of years. So we want to really try to bring in people like yourselves who are in school and um, are looking for this, this opportunity. There's also opportunities for advancement and professional development. So there are um, something that I really love about working in the government is I've had the opportunity to go back to school, get certifications, get other trainings, and it's really an environment where there's ongoing learning. So how do you apply for a federal job? There are a series of steps that you would need to follow in order to compete for a federal job. So the first step is creating your account on usajobs.gov. Number two is setting up alerts and searching for jobs that meet your educational and experience criteria. Three is developing your federal resume for a targeted position. Four is writing your accomplishments. Five is following up and six is preparing for the interview. So the first step in applying to a federal job is to create your account on usajobs.gov. So you will go directly to that website. And what you'll do is you'll click on the profile tab and complete the items on this page. And you'll complete all your personal details there. Then you'll be able to set up alerts and search for jobs that fit your educational and experience criteria. So this is what the basic USA job search um, uh, looks like when you pull it up. So you can enter in keywords um, for the jobs that you're looking for, as well as the location of where you're looking to work. And also you can add other filters as well. But if you are not currently a federal employee, you want to make sure that you have the open to the public filter checked so that you can have positions come up that are open to someone like yourself, because there are particular jobs that are only available to current federal employees. So you want to make sure that you have that selected if you're not a current federal employee. So what you can also do is you can save your searches. So once you start searching for a particular job, you can actually save those searches and you can save multiple searches. And the nice thing about it is you can actually create notifications for receiving either daily or weekly emails that tell you when a particular job opens up. So that's really a great way for you to keep abreast of all the positions that come open and making sure that you're meeting the deadlines to apply for those particular jobs. So some critical vacancy announcement features. So the first step is once you find a job that you want to apply for, you want to definitely read that very carefully and follow the directions. So the job announcement could be very lengthy. So you want to take the time to read that very thoroughly and carefully. You also want to look at the closing dates. So you want to read that immediately because sometimes a job can only be open for as few as five days, or it will also sometimes say that the applications um, that they'll only receive the first 100 applications. So you want to make sure to read the closing dates information. You also want to look to who may apply. So this will tell you the type of applicants who will be considered for the position. So if you're not a current federal employee, again, make sure that you pick jobs that say open to the public. So in the vacancy announcement, you'll also see a section for duties, and this is where it will describe the particular tasks that you will be performing if you're hired for that position. 
The next section is called the qualification section, and that is a very important piece because that will list out the specialized experience that you need in order to qualify for the position. So in that specialized experience section under qualifications, this will be the best place for you to pull out the keywords that will need to be included in your federal resume. You'll also read uh, for educational requirements because there are certain positions that require you to have certain degrees or certain majors. So you wanna be sure to look at that information. And also the knowledge, skills, and abilities. These are also critical keywords that you'll need to cover in your federal resume. Now in the vacancy announcement, you'll also see a section that will say how you will be evaluated. And this section will describe how that particular agency is going to determine who is considered to be best qualified for the position. You'll also see a section that says how to apply and documents. So you wanna pay attention here because that's where you'll have the instructions on how to apply for that position. And there are some times where you may need to add additional documents to the application. So in addition to your resume, you may be required to, uh, for example, upload your transcript. You'll also have a questionnaire, and this is actually a test because you do need to score between 90 and 95 to be in order to be uh, best qualified. So you want to make sure that you give yourself all the credit that you can. And the answers that you answer in that questionnaire will be checked by a human resource specialist to make sure that it matches with the answers um, and your resume. So what are the core competencies? So these are not just soft skills, but in USA Jobs, they're actually the skills that are required for that particular position. And you must include that within your resume. So this is an example of a management and program analyst job at the Department of Energy, and it will list there how you will be evaluated and it will have a series of keywords. And you wanna make sure that all of those keywords are embedded in your resume. This is another example. This is for a quality assurance specialist at the Department of Navy. Again, you'll see how you will be evaluated and a series of keywords. And those are really critical that you include within your resume. So as far as federal job titles and series, when you're searching for jobs on USA Jobs, you'll see a variety of different job titles and they're categorized by particular numbers. So you can actually filter in the USA Jobs for those particular job titles and series, depending on what you're looking for. So that is, these are some of the common ones, but there's many others that you'll find when you're doing a USA Job search. So this is the GS scale. This is a general schedule that is utilized for the majority of the federal government. It outlines how your salary is structured. And so the grades go anywhere from one to 15. And then there's also steps one to 10. And so just to give you a sense of, of this, uh, when I was a college student, uh, when I graduated college, I was hired at a GS-7. That was over 20 years ago. So this increases every year with an, um, an increase at the beginning of the year. But the great thing about it is that if you find a position that has a promotion potential, your, sal your salary can actually increase from year to year. Um, pretty um, effectively. So if you start at a seven and you have a job that goes from seven, nine, 11 to 12, you can almost double your salary in a matter of years. So it's really important to look at that job announcement to see whether it has promotion potential. So as far as students and recent graduates, there are a variety of different programs that you could qualify for. So the Pathways programs offers federal internships and employment opportunities for current students as well as recent graduates. There's also a program called the Internship Program for current students. So if you're in, in college, you're also eligible for that particular program. And there's also the Recent Graduates Program for those who have graduated within the past two years. There's also another program called the Presidential Management Fellows Program, and this is for recent graduates with an advanced degree. So if you're looking to pursue a more advanced degree, uh, you would be eligible for this particular program, and it comes open every year. 
So this is a listing of some other student programs and opportunities. And I could share these slides because these um, are direct links to some of these different programs here. But what I do recommend is if you are on LinkedIn, for example, I would definitely follow USA Jobs as well as the OPM, the Office of Personnel Management, because they come out with notifications almost daily on all the different student programs and opportunities that are available. So how do you know if a job is open to students and recent graduates? So in the job announcement, you'll look to the section where you'll say where, where it'll say the job is open to, and you'll see either a student or a recent graduates icon, and there may also be other groups listed that can apply. Another option is you could select the students or recent grads filter and your results will show all the jobs that are open to student and recent graduates. So creating your federal resume. So in terms of the federal resume, before you actually start creating a brand new resume, with the federal government, you need to figure out if you're going to use something called the USA Jobs Resume Builder, or if you're going to upload your own resume. So some of the jobs actually require you to use the USA Jobs Resume Builder. So it's a good idea to take a look at that and, and see if that will be something that will be useful for you. But it'll basically help you create the document in the standard federal resume format. It also could help you duplicate the resume, which is could be helpful if you're applying to different jobs and you're able to tailor it to specific positions. So um, that is one option for you um, in using the USA Jobs Resume Builder. Another option is to select an effective resume format. And Katherine Troutman, who is actually the leading authority on federal resumes, she proposes using the outline format resume because it best outlines your knowledge, skills, abilities, and accomplishments in a way that is really easy to read and really helpful for those federal HR professionals that are looking at your resume. So it's something that uses short paragraphs and the paragraphs actually lead with all caps, keywords, and key phrases from the announcement. And the keywords and key phrases are supported with your supporting experience, your knowledge, skills, and abilities. And it also includes those accomplishment stories that I'll talk about in a moment. So what is a federal resume? So a federal resume, it has to be a tailored resume for each job that you're seeking. So that's an important piece of information because it's not, you can't just use one resume to apply for various jobs. Uh, it has to be specifically customized for the job that you're applying for. So it tells your story, your unique story, your specialized experience. What are those accomplishments that you have? The resume is also thorough, but concise as well. It captures your knowledge, skills, abilities, as well as your accomplishments. And what it is not, it is not a generic resume used for all jobs. It's not just your job description, and it's not just a chronological overview of your entire work history. It's also not just a bulleted list of responsibilities and duties. So when you're looking at the job announcement, um, one of the most important things that you'll need to do is identify and highlight the keywords in the job announcement. So the keywords are those words or short phrases that relate to the particular job requirements. And in the USA job announcements, under the particular sections that you'll find those will be under the duties, requirements, qualifications, as well as the KSAs or the knowledge, skills, and abilities. There'll also be that section on how you will be evaluated, as well as the questionnaire that you'll have in addition to that. So this is an example of something you might see in a job announcement, and this one is for a program manager. But what you want to do is really look at that job announcement and highlight those keywords that you find within the job announcement. So you'll see keywords and phrases such as gather and develop data, identify issues, compile and analyze findings. And you want to read through that carefully to really pick out those keywords and phrases that you need to embed within your resume. 
So what should you include? So before you get started, you want to make sure that you read the entire job announcement. That's really the foundation for how you'll be able to tailor your resume. So you wanna focus on the particular sections that'll give you the critical information. And that will be found under duties and qualifications, also on how to apply. And an important piece here is that you can actually preview the questionnaire that you'll have to actually complete before you apply for the position. So in the job announcement, there's an option for you to preview the questions to make sure that you actually qualify for that job. You also wanna make sure you look at how you will be evaluated and you wanna make sure that the required experience and education that you have all of that before you apply because the hiring agencies are basically using that job announcement to be able to describe the job and all the required qualifications. So some of the things that they're looking for are, you know, level and amount of experience, they're looking for your education as well as your training. So federal jobs, they often require that you have experience in a particular type of work for a certain amount of time. So you must be able to show that in your resume. So you do that by um, demonstrating your skills and experiences and how they meet the particular qualifications and requirements listed in the job announcement. So you want to make sure that you include important contact information because that's how they'll be able to contact you once you're considered for an interview. So you'll want to include in your res federal resume you, the dates, the hours, and the level of experience for each example of each work experience. You'll also want to have, um, for each experience that you list, you want to include the start and end date, including the month and year. So that's a particular um, detail that you'll need to include. Also, the number of hours that you've worked per week. You also have the level and amount of experience. So for example, if you served either as a project manager or as a team member, that helps to demonstrate your level of experience to that hiring manager that's looking at your resume. You'll also wanna have examples of relevant experiences and accomplishments that could really prove to that hiring, um, to that HR professional that you can perform the tasks that are required in that job announcement. So you do need to have uh, your experience to, you need to have the specialized experience to address every required qualification. So this is an example of the outline format for the federal resume. So you'll see here that this is um, utilized with paragraphs, not bullets. So you'll see that you'll have the keywords from the job announcements in all caps headlining for each of those um, sections, and they'll be directly from the job announcement. So you wanna make sure that those keywords are embedded within your resume in this way. And the outline format um, has been proven to be a really effective um, method of organizing your resume for the federal sector. This is a, another example of a outline format for federal resume. So you have all of the particular contact information up on the top. You have a profile or sometimes that's called a summary section with all the particular uh, summary of expertise that you have. Um, this individual has also listed some software that they have and also uh, your education as well. Also for any particular experience that you want to detail from your, from your school and academic projects, you can also use that, um, the outline format for listing out those keywords and how you accomplished each of those uh, keywords by the projects that you worked on in school. Here you'll also have your experience listed. So you'll have the actual title that you held, the uh, information, the contact information for that particular job. You'll have the month and year, the number of hours that you worked, the salary that you had. And again, you'll see the keywords listed here in a paragraph format. So in your federal resume, you want to make sure that you use some really powerful action verbs, and that is something that will help 
your resume to stand out. So if you did things like lead a project, uh, you want to use words like chaired, controlled, coordinated. If you brought a project to life, you want to use words like administered, built, chartered. If you save time or money, you can talk, you can use words like conserved, consolidated, or decreased. And if you increase efficiency, you can use some of the words listed here, such as accelerated, achieved, and advanced. So this will really help to make your resume, enhance your resume. You also want to avoid using passive voice and weak words. So this is an example here. So instead of saying this was made by me, you want to say I made this. Or instead of saying a growth in productivity of 14% was realized by, you want to say created a product productivity growth of 14% for unit. So these are just some examples that um, you want to basically avoid passive voice and avoid weak words. And you can replace those weak words with some of those action, uh, powerful action verbs that I listed in the previous slide. So you do want to optimize your resume for the reviewer. So these are some of the things that you don't want to do. So you don't want to try to squish in all your information. Typically, a paragraph should be no more than six to eight lines. You don't want to include any personal or irrelevant information. You also don't want to use any unprofessional email addresses or resume file names. So for your email address, you know, typically your first dot last name is a good best practice, um, as well as for your resume file name. You also don't want to use any words that, you know, embellish the truth or lie. You don't want to use any present tense for previous experience. So if you're listing anything that's related to previous experience, you want to use past tense for that. You also don't want to use any type of borders or special characters or graphics. You don't want to use any multiple fonts. You want to be consistent throughout your resume and use one font throughout. And you also don't want to embed any type of information in the headers or footers. So you also want to include volunteer work and roles that you've had in community organizations. So you don't want to limit yourself to just things that you've been paid for, but you also want to include things that you've done, for example, volunteering or working in the community, because those things could also help demonstrate your ability to do the job. So you want to make sure that you include that as well. So you want to definitely emphasize your accomplishments and within your federal resume, you do want to have at least one to two key accomplishments for each job that you've held. And these are some of the questions that you can consider when you're writing out your accomplishments. So one of the things you could think about is what were the costs or time savings? Did you reach or exceed your goals? What changed or improved as a result of your actions? Were you able to receive any type of recognition or reward? Who was impacted? And did your project surpass expectations? So these are just some of some examples of some questions that you can ask yourself as you are establishing your key accomplishments within your resume. So you do want to emphasize your accomplishments with range, frequency, and scale. And remember that numbers can really make your claims seem more valid. So if you're able to add these type of details, for example, for range, you can list something like supervised seven to 12 program analysts who have all since exceeded expectations. That's one example of range. And then also frequency, you can say something like evaluated 40 to 50 articles each week. Or for scale, you can say something like chair committee of 12 presented plans to an audience of 40 to 60 participants, et cetera. So basically the more you use numbers to quantify, it's, it's, it's a better um, explanation of your particular accomplishment. Another model that we see used for federal resumes is the CCAR model for accomplishments. So this stands for challenge, context, action, and results. And what you'll see here is the challenge is basically that problem you encountered or that challenge that you had when you were in that particular role that you had. The context is what, what role you had in that particular job and what was the time frame. The action are those steps that you took to overcome that challenge. 
And the results were actually the impact or the outcome of that particular accomplishment. And that's where you can include those quantifying numbers to help you write out your accomplishment story. So you want to customize your resume. Like I said earlier, your, your resume should really be tailored to the job announcement rather than sending out the same resume for every job. So you have to basically customize your resume so that it helps match your own competencies, knowledge, skills, and abilities and experience to the requirements of the job. So you want to be able to emphasize what are those strengths that you bring to the table and be able to include that in everything that you've done as it relates to the jobs that to the job that you're looking for. And you could potentially leave out experience that is not relevant. So you do want to use similar terms and address every required qualification. Uh, so your experience does need to address every required qualification in the job announcement and the hiring agencies are looking for those specific terms in your resume to make sure that you have that particular experience that they're looking for. So, for example, if the qualification section says you need experience with MS project, then you definitely need to use those words within your resume. So you want to organize your resume to make it easy to understand. So you want to organize your resume to help agencies evaluate your experience. So if you don't provide the information required for that particular agency to determine your qualifications, you may not be considered for that particular job. You do want to use chronological order to list your experience. So you want to start with your most recent experience first and then work your way back. You also want to provide greater detail. So if there's a particular job that you held that is relevant to that particular job you're applying for, you want to write and describe that in further detail. You also want to show all the experiences and accomplishments under the job in which you earned it. And this helps for the agency to determine the amount of experience that you've had with that particular skill. You also want to use the paragraph format aligned with keywords to describe your experiences and accomplishments like I showed you a bit earlier. And you also want to make sure you use plain language and avoid using acronyms or any type of terms that are difficult to understand. So essentially, you want your resume to be concise, but also thorough. So the hiring agencies are reviewing dozens and dozens of resumes daily. And when they look at your resume, they want to be able to see whether your resume stands out. So could the hiring manager see your main credentials within the first 10 to 15 seconds of looking at your resume? You know, does the critical information jump off the page? And that very first page of your resume is actually really important because it'll help to, to make sure that you make it to the next stage of the process. So you want to make sure that your resume is concise, but also thorough. You also want to review your resume before you apply. So make sure that you're looking for it for any particular spelling or grammatical errors. And it's also a good idea to have someone else review your resume for you to give you any feedback or any edits that you need to do before you submit your application. So some important facts about the federal hiring process. So the federal government does have a standard job application, and that is your federal resume. So the federal resume is in place of an actual job application that you would fill out. So the hiring agency uses a job announcement as the foundation to describe the job and list those required qualifications and responsibilities. So that job announcement that you find on USA Jobs is the critical piece to make sure that you have all of the components to tailor your resume. So after applying, the hiring agency takes that information in your resume to verify if you have the required qualifications stated in the job announcement. And then also, once the hiring agency has determined who is qualified, they may use other assessments. For example, you may be asked to come in for an interview, and this has happened to me before where I've been asked to come in for an interview, and I've also been asked for a writing sample. So these are uh, some examples of some other types of assessments that you may be required to complete as well. 
So this is the questionnaire, and this is typically the last piece of the application process after you've uploaded your resume and any other uh, important documents like transcripts, you'll be directed to the questionnaire page of the agency. And so the agency will have this particular questionnaire and you'll need to answer all of the questions. And again, it is somewhat of a test because you do need to score between 90 and 95 to be able to be considered best qualified. So you wanna make sure to give yourself enough credit as you're answering those questions. So you want to make sure that you track your application and follow up. So you definitely want to check your email. You will be receiving notifications from the USA Staffing Office at OPM.gov. You can also track your application within USA Jobs as well to look at the status. And there may be times where you'll see responses that indicate that you were not found to be best qualified or referred. So you may see some of these terms like not referred or ineligible or some of these other ones. And it's it's you know it's just part of the process of learning how to do your federal resume. I know for me in my career, I I had a, a time where I was coming up with a lot of these emails that would say not referred or ineligible, and it really took me a while to understand that really the key piece is tailoring your resume for that particular job announcement. So you want to make sure that you're reading that in full detail and taking out those key words to make yourself best qualified. But if you find that you do get one of these emails, what you could do always is you can always follow up. And each of the vacancy announcements have an HR person on the announcement in which you can actually write an email asking for an explanation as to why you were not considered eligible or why you were not referred. And you can always use that information to uh, improve for the next time you apply for a position. So the next piece, once you are found best qualified and you are called in for an interview, you're gonna be given a behavior-based interview and it is a type of test. So you will be asked some open-ended questions and your answers will be scored. So typically you'll be either interviewed by one person or maybe a panel of multiple people and they will be scoring your answers. So you want to be sure to be prepared with answers to situational or experience-based questions. You can also answer your questions using the CCAR format that we talked about in the resume. So that can include things like the challenge, the context, the actions that you took and what the results were. So that's one way that you can organize your answer for a particular behavior-based interview, interview question. So some other sample behavior-based interview questions that are common are some that are listed here. For example, attention to detail, communication, conflict management, uh, leadership, problem solving, and teamwork are also very common. So you want to make sure that when you prepare for your interview, you are preparing responses for these types of questions. And one of the things that I've done in the past is actually just go to YouTube to look at some tips for interviewing. And it really has some great examples of what you can include in an answer to a behavior-based interview question. You also want to make sure that you have questions prepared to ask at the end of your interview. So in the interview prep, you want to also talk about um, yourself. You want to have that short introduction ready for when they ask you, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. You want to be prepared with those significant accomplishments. You also want to be prepared with some of your best competencies and your most valuable skills. And these are all things that will highlight why you're so unique and why you're why you're fit for the job. So in summary, these are the steps again in order to be considered for a federal job. You want to create your account on usajobs.gov. You want to set up your alerts and search for jobs that fit your educational and experience criteria. You want to work on creating your federal resume for a targeted position. You want to write your accomplishments. You want to follow up and you also want to be prepared for the interview. So at this point, um, I want to see if there's any questions.
I have a question. Um, so um, I don't, I was trying to create a resume for one of my coworkers who has a lot of military experience and plus, and, and plus they also work for the city and have a number of years with the city. So one of the things that I saw on his, I'm trying to be like you a little bit, trying to do creative writing and help people with resumes. So one of the things that I noticed is that on his resume um, for the 20 years of service as, in the military, he had indicated every position, um, even if the position had entailed the same job duties, but a different title, he just listed and he had like 15, 20 pages, which what would be your recommendation with something like that? Yeah, well, there's definitely a way to transfer military experience into civilian. And there's also um, special hiring authorities. For example, if there's a veteran or if there's a disabled veteran or something like that, there's actually additional points given to your application. So there's places that you can indicate that. But what I would say is um, definitely use those transferable skills from the military when you're applying for that job. But the, the most important piece is really um, making sure that you have those key words within your resume, because that's going to determine whether you're qualified for the position. So taking that military experience, there's definitely a way to customize it to make sure that it's fitting those needs of the qualifications that they're looking for in the job announcement. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for asking that question. Just from the administrative side, I was trying to figure out who the iPhone user is. So mm -hmm. if you could please find me in the chat, you don't have to say your name over the line, but just message me, direct message, your first name and last name so I can um, give you credit for attending today. That's for okay. the person who just asked the question. Thank you so much. I'll do it individually. Thank you. You're welcome. I had a question, um, Ruth. Thank you very much for all this information. This was really helpful. Um, one of the uh, resume examples that you showed, I noticed um, to, to that point that was just mentioned, um, there was um, something on there that said 30% or more disabled. Um, so could you speak a little bit about um, that, it, the, the purpose of having that on there and when you should include something like that? Yeah, so it's important if you are um, disabled or have that specific criteria that you listed on the resume because there are additional points given. And also when you're doing your job search, you can actually um, search for filters under that as well. So if that's something that you have, you definitely want to indicate that because it will give you additional points and make you closer to being best qualified. So um, there are actually books um, by the author, Catherine Troutman. Um, she, she's actually the one that indicates the outline format for the resume. And she's actually written books for military. Um, and she outlines all of the um, criteria for that as well. But um, she has books that you can get on Amazon that explain all that thoroughly as well. Now, would that just be for a military disability or for just general? No, there's actually also something called Schedule A. So Schedule A is another special hiring authority that's not necessarily military, but it could be something, some things that you, you would even not even think about. But um, if, if you have migraines or if you have um, carpal tunnel or, you know, something like that, there's a listing of all these Schedule A um, uh, hiring authorities. And that could also help you to not even compete for a job. So if you qualify for a job and you have a Schedule A criteria, you can actually go through to the hiring manager without competing with other people. So that's really important too, if you have a Schedule A hiring authority. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, we generally say for a resume, 10 years of experience, 15 if relevant to the job. Is that the same for a federal resume? Yes, that's that's the same. I've definitely have used experience all the way from 
15 years because the more you know that you're able to align your particular experience to the job requirements and that job announcement the more helpful it is so even it, it does seem long but it's actually important to have that if it's relevant to that particular job so i i would say it's okay i i have a pretty long resume myself thank you Hi, uh, good evening, everybody. I just wanted to know, um, are we able to go back to this presentation? I see that it's recorded, but how will we be able to go back to it? I can like, send parents the copy of the slides. Can you uh, disseminate it, Terrence? Yeah, we'll, we'll be happy to share that. And that's gonna be a resource that'll go over to Leslie's office um, so that that way students, as they come in, will have access to uh, the, the links as you mentioned specifically, but also the information. Yeah, and I also want to mention that, you know, USA Jobs is not the only way that you can enter the federal government. There are other options where you can make, like attend a job fair, for example. And if they have recruiters on site, there are other avenues for you to enter the federal government as well. So you want to really follow uh, USA Jobs as well as OPM.gov, um, like I said, on LinkedIn, because they announce a lot of these different um, opportunities and events that come up. So so there are other avenues for you to also get into the federal government, but internship programs are really um, a, a great way to enter in, uh, as well as um, just networking and getting to know people. Francis? Thank you, Ruth. Great presentation. Um, rather robust, I would say. Um, I wondered if you could just touch a little bit on the volunteer experience. I do a lot of volunteering that um, kind of encompasses, you know, a bunch of different things, not necessarily under, you know, professional experience or even my educational experience. So how, again, with the outlines that you um, showed us and what you talked about, where and how would you implement or can someone implement that volunteer experience that could actually make someone you know more qualified even yeah so you want to do the reverse chronological order so if it's something that you're currently doing right now a position that you're holding or you held recently you can put it you know up front in your resume and just list the title of what you had and make sure that um, the role and the responsibilities that you had within that volunteer experience aligns with the keywords in the job announcement so I would definitely, you know, put it in there because it definitely sounds like it would be relevant to the job. So you do want to include that, um, you know, depending on what time frame you did that particular role um, included in there. Perfect. Thank you. I think there's a question. This. Yes, applying for a job with the government requires you to be intentional. Set time aside to complete. Yes, it does take time. And let me tell you all, it takes patience too, because it can take a while um, for this whole process of you searching for the job, you getting your resume together, you applying for the job and going through the whole process. It could take months and it has taken months. I've seen from my own experience. Um, but I want you to just not be discouraged. I just want you to still try and go through that process process and the more applications you put in, um, the more experience you have, the more confident you'll be. So you definitely want to be intentional, take the time to study that job announcement. And, you know, even if you don't get it the first time, just like I said, you could follow up, get feedback and use that to improve for the next time. Sharon? Um, you're on mute. Mute. Okay. okay Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you guys for doing this. I really appreciate it. Uh, my question is, I've been in the same career field for 30 years. So I have, and I have different levels of um, education and also different levels of experience within my career field. And I wanted to know how, how long, like say I was in management five years ago. So how how long ago would any experience be relevant if I was applying for a job on, on USAID? 
jobs? Yeah, I mean, it's still applicable. Um, you know, if you held a position, are you saying that you want to apply for something else other than management or? Let, let, let's say let's say that if management was one of the things and I saw a position that that I, I wanted to apply for, but management wasn't what I have been doing for the past five to seven years. Mm hmm. How I just want to know it, it, when I'm saying what I'm qualified to do, how far out is that? Are those qualifications relevant? Yeah, I would say they're still relevant. I think someone asked earlier, even something 10 years, 15 years ago that you did that is relevant to the job would still be applicable for that particular job if it's um, in the specialized uh requirements and experience, you want to just make sure that um, those key words are in there. So if you did something related to management and the position is for a management position, um, even if you did it a while back, it still counts. Okay. And it's still relevant. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. To honor everyone's time, uh, we want to thank uh, Ms. Ruth uh, Hurtado for uh, the presentation today. Can we get some virtual hand claps? And we're going to pass it on over to uh, Ms. Leslie Balloway. I just got like kicked out of the meeting. Not sure what happened, but um, just wanted to say thank you. This was so helpful. Um, I look forward to helping our students and alumni position themselves and make that federal resume so they can get those great jobs. Um, Ruth, thank you very much. Um, again, everybody like follow up. I'm going to put my email in the chat. I'll put the link in the chat again. Make sure just reach out to us. We're here to help um, and, and connect these dots for you. So thank you very much for everybody for coming today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for this collaboration. And I also wanted to leave a note. Um, I don't know if many of you have heard, um, the career services have been here for some time, but the newest thing on the block right now is the Center for Male Engagement. And um, I'm so Hi. glad for people to collaborate here today. Um, and we'll look forward to seeing each and every one of you in some type of way, continue to participate with the Center for Male Engagement. Um, I do wanna throw this out there that even though it is titled the Center for Male Engagement, we are about enriching everybody. So if you haven't connected with us yet, please hit the link and um, join our listserv um, as someone who is interested in this work. And we look forward to seeing you at the next events. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna look forward to a lot more dynamic content. We just had an amazing career fair on campus that was held down in an excellent way by the career services staff. Let's give them another uh, a virtual hand clap. <laughs> it was amazing. I'll even use another word. It was dope, y'all. If you missed it, you definitely want to get to the next one. And um, I think I'm going to put that on my LinkedIn right now. Absolutely. It, it was, was dope. dope. Career Yo, fair with, with the exclamation point at the end. <laughs> <laughs> but um, until next time, um, uh, everyone be safe and um, we'll see you then. <laughs>